part of what we have been ministering on really since March about the shift has begun. And we, uh, we, we told you out of Acts chapter 3 that the, the Bible talks about uh, heaven must hold or, or contain Christ. God is holding him there until the time of restoration of all things occurs. And the Lord spoke to me and said, tell my people that the shift has begun. And the shift is the, the beginning of the season of the restoration of all things. So we can't approach this season with an attitude, I already know that, or it's going to be like this. It's going to be like the Ilzusa revival, you know, in the early 1900s, it's going to be this way. You don't know what it's going to be like because it has never been. This is brand new. And it requires all of our attention, our focus. By the way, the biggest battle you're going to have going forward is the enemy assaulting your mind to give you multiple things to focus on. And it'll drive you nuts when God wants you to focus on one thing, and that is the Lord Jesus, his word. When you, and it's work. It is work to stay focused. Amen. I said it's work to stay focused. And the enemy knows if I can disrupt their focus, I can control them. So I don't, I don't want you going from this day forward, living your life, looking for the enemy and all paranoid. That's fear. We have been born of God, washed in the blood of, of the Lamb. And that means that we are a new breed of people. And this new breed of people lives like their father yeah. by, faith. by faith. Amen. Amen. And so living by faith is not a thing that we try to do when we run into a hot spot, get into a difficult situation. I'm going to believe God. We're supposed to exercise our faith every day. Our faith is supposed to be growing. Even the Bible talks about growing from faith to faith glory to glory. So if you are exercising your faith, there's more to, to grow into. Amen. So don't ever feel like I've got that. I'm there already. No, no, no. Because that's when the enemy will launch an attack that you need next level faith for and you didn't get there. Amen. Lights. And so in this season of restoration of all things, uh, marvelous things will be happening, but also uh, we made mention that there will be a great falling away. This is the season where people will fall away. Falling away is not like you're walking down the trail and then all of a sudden you fall. No, no, no. Falling away is a decisive, uh, a decision that the individual makes to walk away from the Lord. I'm not talking about, well, I'm going to miss a couple, of, a couple of Sunday or a couple of services. I'm talking about to throw their hand up in his face and say, I'm done with you. Now, this got to be something really, really strong to cause a person to walk away from the one that saved them. What, is, what, what can cause that deception? Amen. Amen. And so, if you would look at your outline, uh, I'm going to bounce over to uh, another scripture here in a moment that's not on your outline, but you got a pen, a pencil, or borrow your neighbors, and you can write that down so you can go back and look at it. But in this season of the restoration of all things, we will have to stretch our faith in order to be recipients of God's blessing manifestation. The blessing is yours. The blessing is on you like your skin. The moment you got born again, the blessing came with the whole package. The blessing is, is God's divine empowerment for you to succeed, be successful, and to prosper. It's the same one Adam had. It's the same blessing that Abraham had. But it belongs to Christ Jesus, who is Abraham's seed. And the Bible says in Galatians, if you are Christ, or since you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, the promise of the blessing. And the blessing, uh, with it being on your life, it X's you out of anything listed under the, under the category of the curse. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
it doesn't apply to you. So that means there's nothing ahead of you but green lights. But you just can't sit there and say, well, God going to give it to me. He's already given it to you. Like he gave Israel the promised land, but they had to go get it. They had to go in there by faith and take it. Amen. 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 So faith is not a shot in the dark. So in this season of restoration, we're going to have to stretch our faith so that we can be recipients of God's blessing manifestation. I'm talking about the blessing taking your life beyond what you even imagine. Wow. Amen. Amen. So that means no more small thinking. Right. You might want to highlight that on your paper, even write it in your hand for your own personal cheat sheet. <laughs> no more small thinking. And this is what the Lord is going to deal with you about. When I say you, I'm talking about all of his people. Our level of thinking. We think small because we've been groomed in fear. Yeah. God wants us to think his thoughts, and God thinks big thoughts. Amen. We, we, how many of you have had a chance to travel, at least in, in this country, in our country, go from been, been a place or two? This is a big place, isn't it? And you haven't been everywhere. So the earth in its size is pretty big. But there are some other planets out there that God created that make the earth look like a little baseball in comparison. And then there are other galaxies. Billions of them. Billions of stars in the galaxies. And around every star, most stars are planets. Then they have planets that you can't see with the telescope. You got to have infrared to pick them up. Mind blowing. God made all of that. And he made all of that territory. Then he made man. Why? Because man is made in God's image and likeness. And he has made us kings and priests unto our God. Guess what? A king can't be a king unless he got territory. So you can't think small. What proves that a king has tremendous value and his net worth has gone up is the acquisition of territory. So you got to think big. You got to think like God. Increase. And you can't be afraid to increase. A lot of people live for what this, what's called the American dream. I don't know what it is, but you know, it has something to do with getting you a house and, and living comfortable. God doesn't want you just getting a house and living comfortable. He wants you to live by faith and run with him. You don't stop till he say, okay, we're done. Has he come and told any of you that you're done? Then that means your faith needs to keep working. Amen. So it's going to get stretched. The Lord will, the Lord will tell you to, to ask him for something that's you, you know that ain't even on your radar. And he'll say, ask me. And you get ready to ask and your lips start open. <laughs> because it's beyond what you thought. But isn't there a place in the scripture, in the New Testament, in the book of Ephesians, that talks about God would do exceedingly above and beyond what we could ask or think. So you can't have small thinking and try to run with God. Amen. And so we're in this season of the blessing manifestation. Great things will be happening. Marvelous things will be happening. But we need to understand what it is that God wants us to do. Amen. Uh, real quick, maybe uh, if y'all could pull it up, up on the screen. Matthew 24. I want to look at a couple of things here. And then we're going to go back to our outline. Matthew 24. Look at verse 3. Now, as he sat it on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? Because he had already told them, you see, they were talking about how beautiful the, the, the temple was. And the Lord said, uh, you see all these stones? There won't be one left. He said, I'm prophesying to you. There won't be one left on, on another. This whole beautiful place is going to be annihilated. About 70 years later, the whole place was annihilated. So if, it, if when the Lord speaks a thing and it doesn't happen in your three weeks or your two years, 
Don't trip out because if he said it, it's already, it's a done deal. It will happen. Amen. Sometimes we, it's going to happen when I, so I want, so I can see it. Well, you might be gone. Hello, somebody. The Lord spoke about the, 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 the times of restoration of all things. And I'm sure generations before were saying, it's going to happen in our day. It's going to happen in our day. They gone. It's happening in your day. Amen. So he said, what, what would be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And he answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. One translation says it like this. Take heed or tend to this that you don't get pressed mentally. In this time that we're living, saints are falling like flies over an over a open fire. Mentally. Cannot handle pressure. And so the enemy is applying pressure. And the Lord says, see to it that you don't faint in your mind. See to it that you don't cave in mentally. Because if a person caves in mentally, it's almost like not being here. They start operating on a different plane. And the enemy's, the enemy's not just picking on saints. He hates people. People to the devil uh, is nothing more than an apparatus. Something I use, and when I finish, I throw it away. But he wants to con us into thinking that people are our enemy. Amen. Like one person said, that's why you can't be nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> All of us have, to deal with, have had to deal with some folks that got under our skin. It's like, Lord, if, ooh, you better be glad the Lord is sitting on his throne. But he said, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name and say, I'm the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled. See that you don't panic. See that you don't have a mental meltdown. He said, you see to it. I said, you see to it. This is what he's telling them. You got to see to it that you don't cave in mentally. Which means that we got to become mentally tough. What causes panic? Fear. Because panic is a part of fear. God's not behind that. Because he's not given us the spirit of, but of, and of what kind of mind? So here he's saying, you got a sound mind, but you got to keep it. So he says, see to it that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The strategy of the enemy, or part of his strategy, is to get us to race for comfort. If we, if we get focused on comfort, that's all we'll see, that's all we'll be looking for, and it will get disrupted. When we get disappointed, we're looking for somebody to blame, and who is it that we will blame? It'll be the Lord himself. If God was God, why he let this happen to good people? Mm. And goes on to talk about nations going to be against nations and all this. Then down at uh, verse 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. This, this is the season we're in, folks. So it's pressures coming from all kinds of places. You can't even hardly turn the TV on now without something trying to apply pressure to you to get you to accept or to think this way or to endorse this or to tolerate this. Pressure. And what a lot of folks do is like, you know, they just pull down the shade and, and sit down. I stay in my house. I don't fool with people. And you know, I just stay to myself. You can't do that long because you're going to have to interact with people at some point. And the very one that you don't want to, the folks you don't want to see be the one you have to interact with. 
it's kind of like, you know, anybody ever ask the, uh, ask the Lord for more patience? Lord, give me more patience. Got a question. Did he give it to you? He ain't gave it to you yet. You know why? Because you already got it. He already gave you patience. Now you got to exercise it. You got to apply it and let it get stretched. And how does it get stretched? By being tried. You thought when, when, it, when the pressure came that it was going to be it was going to be a breeze. And then you start saying stuff that you used to say. Those words that ain't supposed to be in there. That you told your third cousin that you had been freed from by the power of God. But once the pressure came, up from your stomach came a bubbling crude. And it wasn't oil. It was words, and we, we responded in a way that made us feel so bad. Because I didn't know I would do that. And we start shutting down, and the enemy takes note. Aha, apply this kind of pressure in this direction, and you can nail him. You can nail her. You can get them to back away. And the whole time the pressure is being applied, the enemy whispers, the Lord let this happen to you. So we're going to find out that faith ain't just to get something. It's your lifestyle. It is to be your lifestyle. Say it's my lifestyle. And then he went on to say that uh, many will be offended in verse 2, verse 10. And betray one another and will hate one another. That's when you get down to the nitty gritty. This is where we are now, folks. Saints are bailing out and throwing one another under the bus. It's a calculated strategy of the enemy. Create fear, and pandemonium will break out and blame the Lord for all of it. You hear people talk about stuff like, you know, the devil told me this and said this and that to me. And rarely will you hear him say, the Lord say it. You, you know the devil's voice real, real well, but afraid of the Lord. Ooh, I heard something. I felt something. Oh, I, I, I can't be in there. I, uh -uh. I ain't going to sit in there by myself. Mm -mm. I felt something. They told me, just open your Bible up, begin to read, and tell, ask the Lord to help you. And then you start feeling something. Mm -mm. But we'll watch a movie for five hours about demons, about the dead. All right. I want you all to understand in, in chapter 24 of Matthew, this is giving a picture of the last days where we are in this in the season of the restoration of all things. Great things will be happening and difficult, pressured times will be happening. Even the scripture says, uh, for know this, in the last days will be perilous times, times that are grievous and hard to deal with, hard to deal with. And here the Lord says, in that time, when that time comes, you are going to be hated for being associated with me. You're going to be hated for carrying my name. So there's nowhere to run, folks. So what do we do? You got to learn how to live by faith. Yes, yes. Amen. Now let's go back to your outline. We told you we got to come up to his level, and we got to do it by faith. We got to see ourselves as he sees us, and we see ourselves by faith. Yes. We confess. We got to confess what he has said about us. And act accordingly, but we do it by faith. Yeah. We are to live by. Yeah. So in order to live by something, we need to know exactly what it is we're supposed to be living by. And then how to apply its applications. So what is faith and how do I live by it? It's not a shot in the dark. I've heard people say, well, you know, uh, Reverend, I have faith, but. 
you don't have, you don't understand faith. It's not a put down. You don't understand. So if you don't understand how, what faith is and how it works, then how do you know you're walking by faith? Amen. Amen. A lot of things that we call faith has been a hope. I hope. But hope doesn't have any substance. It's just out there. And it's got to be based on something. Faith has a base. The Word of God. It backs it up. It's just like our currency. You got to have gold to back that stuff up. Otherwise, it's just paper with numbers and colors on it. Amen. Get rid of the gold. You got trouble. You got to manipulate that stuff to keep everybody from figuring out it ain't nothing backing this. If everybody figured out there's nothing backing it, there will be a total collapse in a few hours. You worked all your life to gather the paper and find out it's nothing but paper. It has no value. Kill that tree for nothing. Amen. So, look at your outline. True Bible faith makes you an overcomer. True Bible faith makes you an overcomer. So you got to start saying this about yourself. I am an overcomer by faith. So it always, faith always says what the Word of God says. True Bible faith always says what the Word of God says. Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes that word whatever means whoever. So male, female, young, old, in between, whoever is born again. Here the scripture says you overcome the world and all of its systems. You overcome. You have what it takes to overcome all of it. That means that you, you are above it. But if you don't know that, you can't live as an overcomer. You are an overcomer, but you don't know. That's one of the biggest deals that the enemy, the biggest uh, uh, tactics of the enemy against us is to keep us ignorant of the knowledge of the God. We don't know. So we try to fill in the blanks. You know, we, we, we jump and shout, and it's good to jump and shout, but we need to understand the why of the jump and the shout. Amen. Amen. I applaud folks for jumping and shouting, but I just start screaming and, and giving God glory when you know they got an understanding of his word. Now you can apply it. Amen. And your jump and your shout will have power with it. Amen. You know, it's not enough to, to come to church and have a good time and then go home and I'm broke. And I'm sick and I'm struggling. And, I, and every relationship I'm involved in, it, is, it bottoms out. It flatlines. Why? Because I don't know how to walk by faith in all of that. If I don't know how to believe God for uh, provisions, I'll become a beggar. Yeah. Remember the guy at the, at the gate uh, or at the temple? And Peter and John were on the way to the temple, and he's begging. Folks brought him every day and set him there, and he's begging. And Peter said, look, silver and gold I don't have to give you, but what I do have, I'm going to give that to you. And what he had, he had it, and what he had was faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus means that his name has a backing. All of heaven, God himself, he is God's word manifested in the flesh. The power of his resurrection backs my word. And the word uh, is what raises you up. It raised him up. And so I'm giving you his name. And he took his hand in the name of Jesus. Get up. And the Bible said he leaped. And kept leaping. 
And then the religious folks say, how did all this happen? He said, I don't know. All I know is I was like this, and a little man came along and said, in the name of Jesus, if the Lord's name had been Fred, and he said, in the name of Fred, he would have gotten up. He had faith in the name, and he exercised his faith for that guy. And that's what the Lord is waiting on us to do. Yes. Not have one or two people in church that spit at you. Yes. Oh, when they pray, something happens. Well, it should be something happening when you pray. Yes. Really, really, let's be honest. When we pray, all of us, something does happen. Yes. But a lot of times, the something is nothing. <laughs> Y'all get that later. For whatever or whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Watch this. And this is the victory that has overcome, not going to, that has overcome the world, our faith. It has already overcome. If I was the devil, I would fight you tooth and nail to keep you from learning and understanding faith. Faith worketh by faith works by love. So he's gonna fight you on the love walk so that there's no power behind your faith. And he's gonna fight you on faith so you won't know how to live. The opposite of faith is fear. Fear brings torment, it'll shut you down. You don't have green lights ahead of you. This too much for y'all? This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? It means you are an overcomer. Say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Say it like you mean it. So as God's child, you've got the right to overcome in life. It's your right. Say, it's my right. It's my right. Say it again. Your right to do what? It is your right. And you got to understand it. It's my right. I don't have to beg. I don't have to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on. What you doing, little Greg? I'm hanging on to the gates of heaven. I'm shaking the gates. You don't need to shake the gates of heaven. They're open. Servant.